Hi everyone, it's Sherry. I hope that you are having a wonderful day. You're not going to believe what we do with this cardboard box. You're not going to want to miss it. Stay tuned. Welcome to my channel. I am so glad that you decided to stop by and welcome to all of my new friends and to all of my new subscribers. Welcome back to all of my longtime friends and longtime subscribers. Thank you all so much for the wonderful ways in which you support me and my channel. If you order anything, you've gotten a cardboard box. If you're a paper crafter and you've ordered paper, you've gotten a cardboard box. I do a lot of paper craft supply shipping in cardboard boxes. So if you get a package from me, it's probably in some type of cardboard box because personally I think that my items ship better in a cardboard box versus an envelope. So what I decided to do today is I decided to sacrifice one of my cardboard shipping boxes to show you how you can take that box and repurpose it. This style of box comes in a variety of sizes and I use a variety of sizes when I'm shipping items. So you will frequently get this type of box from me and you've probably gotten this type of box from other companies as well. I don't have a prototype made because I'm envisioning something that I think will work with this box. So y'all, we are in uncharted territory together because we're going to take this cardboard box, take what I have here in my head, and see if we can make the two join together and work. So let me flip to my overhead camera because y'all know what time it is. It's time to make. All right, so a lot of times I get asked, where do you get these ideas from? And y'all, sometimes I will just look at something and I can see it as something else. And every time that I have put one of these boxes together, I've had this idea of why don't I cover it and let's see what happens. So that's what we're going to do today. I have an idea in my head of how I want this to look when I'm finished. And then I'll share with you an idea I have for using it. So here's how these boxes work. You have these little marks here. So this section right here is about an inch and a quarter and you fold up to the size that you need. So I have decided that I want to go with a fold of this. So it's already pre-scored for me y'all and that takes the guesswork out of it. They come in a set of 50. But if you want to get some of these to make today's project, if it works out, then I'll have it linked in the description box. So here's what I'm thinking. For those of you who have been with me for a while, you will recognize this beautiful Rossi Italian wrapping paper. It is some of the best luxury wrapping paper on the market. It is very, very strong. It's not your standard on the roll wrapping paper. It comes in these really large sheets and I think this sheet is about 30 inches long and it's 20 inches wide. So for the longest time I was using the Rossi wrapping paper for a variety of my projects. I have so many different designs and then you know how you get away from something. Well I got away from it for a while but as I was cleaning up and reorganizing my craft room I got reacquainted with my Rossi and I love this dragonfly paper. I hope that my camera is doing it justice because you have all of this gold infused. Like I said, it's a luxury wrapping paper. It's called Rossi, R-O-S-S-I. And so this is what I've decided to use because I have this large piece. I am going to use my wrapping paper to cover the outside. So what I'm going to do is I've already placed tape on the back of my box and when I place it down, I'm going to place it down like this. So we're going to go ahead and peel away the tape backers from the entire piece. And I get asked the question a lot, why don't you use cardboard? Y'all, I am really a chipboard girl. I love using chipboard, but I will use cardboard, and I have used cardboard before, but I just prefer chipboard. Cardboard is actually what I grew up with in paper crafting, but as chipboard became available, I realized that I enjoyed the rigidness and the firmness 
that you get from chipboard. So now I'm just going to take this piece and I'm going to place it down like this. Then I'm going to trim away the excess here. And so then I'm just going to take my big old spatula and we are going to make sure that we have a really nice stick on this. So now I'll flip it over and we're just going to go around and make some adhesive tabs. So we're going to cut this way and this way. And you'll notice I'm not going all the way up. I'm stopping here. And then we'll cut this way. I'm going to reduce a little bit of this. Then we'll do the same thing here. And we'll do this. Then I'm just going to remove a little bit of this because we don't need for it to be as wide as it is. And so once we have it like this, let's go into the corners right here and we're just going to cut out to this point. So basically we're freeing this and we'll go all the way around and do that. So now that we have all of these tab points, we're going to go ahead and just miter. And so basically by mitering, we have created this corner here and we are going to cut through that intersection if you have the five in one tool. This is great for that as well. I'll have the five in one tool video linked in the description box. For those of you who haven't seen it, introduced it on the channel maybe about two months ago, and it's very helpful. I'm even starting to see it show up on other channels, which means that we are getting the word out about this really helpful tool. So now we're going to go around and we are going to fold over our tabs. Y'all, I'm trying another new tape runner and we're going to see how this works for me. So I am just going to fold that over like that. Tape seems to be coming off fairly smoothly. Um, but I want to give it some time of trying it before I share it with you. All I'm doing is folding over all of these pieces. And I can use tape here because this is going to be sandwiched in between another piece of paper. So that's going to hold it down as well. So let's just keep folding over until we go all the way around. Get that smooth. Fold this one over. And y'all, we're just going all the way around and getting those edges. And we're on our last one. 
So ordinarily, I would fast forward through this repetitive process, but I wanted to make sure that since this is new for all of us using this box, that we see all of the steps of the process. I'm going to go around, get all of these nice and stuck. I'll flip it over so that you can see this is how it looks. And again, I really love this dragonfly paper. I have so missed my Rossi. So for all of these, we're going to bend on that first score mark. This is going to be the same all the way around. All right, so we know that it's 10 and a half inches this way, and this is eight and a half inches tall. So I have my inside liner. I decided to go with this because I wanted a little contrast. So I'm going to trim this to 12 by 10. And I'm only going to put down one piece for right now, and the reason for that is I will be adding some brads for the handle here at the top, so I want to make sure I have a way of covering those. So I'm just going to take this, and I'm just going to place my tape on my paper. So I'm just going to cover the back and tape. So then I'm going to peel away my tape backers. And then we're going to take this piece and I am just going to place it down like this. And we'll get that nice and stuck. Now, now you can see I have a little bit of that showing. I'm not worried about that at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and bring in some brown paper. And we are going to cut off a piece that is two and a half by 12 because we're going to make the handle in just a minute. But we're going to take this and I'm going to put it in because I need to see how wide this is so I'll know how to cover it and it looks like it's about three and a half by eight and a half so I am going to cut two strips at eight by three and we're going to take those two strips and we're going to place them down like this So I'll take my tape again, put my tape on the back of my pieces, and y'all, none of this has been pre-planned. As a matter of fact, I should have made my handle so that it would have a chance to dry. We'll do that in just a minute, but we're going to go ahead and put this piece down with tape I'm going to go ahead and just take this piece and we're going to place it right there so, so now that we have that right there I'm going to go ahead and make my handle so that it will have a chance to harden in a curl so this is two and a half by twelve so I'm going to score at one, and then I'm going to score at two and one eighth. Then I'll bring in my glue, and we're just going to place some glue like this, fold that over, and get it stuck. And then we'll place some glue here.
Fold this over. Then I'm going to take my bone folder and then just work that glue into all layers of the paper and curling it at the same time. You can run it along your desk, but you can see I have a nice curve to this. So I'll set it to the side and let it dry. So now we'll come back to this and I'm going to take this piece, add some tape, and we'll put it down. Now I hope this works because I think it's going to be beautiful. So now we're going to take this piece and we're going to put it down like this. So then I'm going to bring in my blade so that I can sort of figure out how much paper I need to cut here. And I can see that we're six inches. So what I'm going to do is cut off a piece that is seven inches by 10. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that. I'm not going to put it down right now. I'm just going to cut it. So let's go ahead and cut off. And I'm going to go ahead and make it seven and a half just to make sure that I have enough. So in a few minutes, we'll take this piece and we'll put it down right there. And I'm glad that I cut off a little more than I thought I needed because I actually needed seven and a half inches so that it would overlap with this piece. So now what we're going to do, we're going to take our bone folder, big old spatula, whatever you're using, and find that second score mark. So here was the first one. We're going to go to the second one, and that's the one that we want on both sides. So there's that first one. Just bend until the second one just naturally wants to show up. And now we're going to take this and we're going to fold it over like that. So then we're going to take this end and we know that we have that score mark right here. That was the first one, the natural one that was always there. So now I'm just going to find score mark number two. And I'm going to work that score mark So you can see the two. There's one and there's two. So now we fold this over. We bring this up and we're going to fold it over like this. So it'll go over like that. So all I'm going to do is just work this a little bit to loosen it. And then we're just going to add glue to hold these together. And so I'm going to need my big clips for this. So I'm going to go ahead and just take this. And you can see that when I put it together, this is how it's going to look. So when I add my glue, I'll be joining this to this. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm taking my phone folder and making a little mark so that I will know how much glue I actually need to place. So I'm just giving myself a little mark that won't even be noticeable to anyone but me. So now I'm going to take this and there's my mark. So I am just going to take my glue and on this part, y'all, I am going to be super, super generous with that glue because we don't want anything coming up. So I'll put my glue on that side and then I'm going to put my glue on 
this side, being very generous with the glue. And I'm going to fold these in and fold this up like that. I'm going to take one of my big clips and just put it there so that it will hold that in place. And then we'll do the same thing over here. I am just finagling my edges to make sure that they're even. And I'm going to take my clip and put it right there. And y'all, I get these clips from the Dollar Tree. And so then I am just going to press down like this. I'm going to take a scrap piece, put it there. And let's see if we can open that wide enough to hold it while I press down on this side. And the great thing about my reptile adhesive, y'all, is it dries clear and it grabs very fast. I can already see that my stick is taking place. And then I'm going to move it over to this side because I don't want the clip on the outside to sit too long because it might make an indentation here. So now we're going to go ahead and place down our handle. I am just going to take my handle and I am just shaping the ends a little bit. And so now we can take this piece and we're going to go ahead and fold and fold over like that. And I am going to take my handle and we're going to place it right here. So I'm going to take that handle I've already notched out and I'm just going to pinch the ends to fold it like that. And you can do this however you want. So now I'm going to take my handle and I'm going to see how I want it. So I can see how I want it. I'm going to take my glue, be generous with my glue. I'll stand this up and fold it over like that. And then I'll fold this over like this. And that's how we're going to attach our handle. So I am just going to let that dry a moment. Let's just go ahead, get that nice and stuck. So now my handle is on. And I am just going to place a brad. So I'm punching a hole. And I'm going to place a brad. This is going to keep that handle in place. So I'm going to open that brad like that. And then I'll take my piercer and I'm going to pierce another hole. Take this brad, put it in. And now you can see my two brads right there. And then we fold over. You can see how nice my handle looks. Y'all, we're not finished because we're about to do something that is really going to elevate the look of this box or bag, whatever we're going to call it. I needed to hold it closed so I could do what I'm about to do, so I put one of my clips here. Now, if you were watching my channel, oh, let's say three years ago, you probably saw me using these little fasteners here. I love them. Don't use them as often as I used to, but we are using them today. So I am just going to place some glue. We're going to take one put it right there, and then we take one and we put it right there. And then y'all, I'm going to stretch this to try to get the closure 
as tight as I can. So I'm pulling from both ends to get that nice and tight. Let's go ahead and get that stuck. And then we're going to take this one and do the same thing. So I'm adding my glue. And this is actually turning out even prettier than I envisioned. So we're putting that there. Then I'm just going to stretch to try and get it tight and to try and get it even. And y'all know that it's not going to be perfect, but I know this, y'all, it's looking really good. So now we are going to unbuckle. These are working buckles. I've had these for quite a while now. Like I said, I know I've had them for over three years. So now what I'm going to do, I am going to punch a hole here. so that I can add another brad because we want these to stay. Then I'll punch a hole over on this side so that I can add another brad. Then I'm going to punch a hole here at the bottom. We're going to add another brad. Now I'll have to go in and just open this one because I can't show you the inside of this because it's pretty tight. And then we're going to punch another hole and add our bread. We go in and open that bread. And so now I can take my piece and when I put it in, I will be covering those bread. So let me go ahead and apply tape to the back of this piece and y'all I will be right back. All right y'all so I have removed the tape from the back and I am very carefully just going to take this and put it in like this. Now I didn't go down far enough I can see that but I am going to fix it. And I didn't place my paper down as far as I want it to, so I have to do a little bit of cleanup by removing this overhang. And I'm simply doing that with my scissors. So now I'm just going to take my big old spatula and go across the top and give that a clean. So now I'm also going to take my big old spatula and just smooth everything out. fold over and so now you can see we have a beautiful inside to this as well as outside we can take this piece and fold it over and then we can buckle it I have an idea for what I want to put on the inside of mine but I'm going to share that with you guys in another video so the next tutorial that I do will be a tutorial on how I intend to use my little briefcase which is what I'm going to call this because that's what it reminds me of. So let's buckle. Like I said, this works just like a normal buckle. And let's buckle over here. And so there we have it, y'all, for a cardboard box. I think that this little dragonfly briefcase is mighty cute. Look at this. I think that I might even do something to the back. 
And if I do think of something to do to the mat, I'll share that with you in the next tutorial as well. But look at how nice this is. When finished, it will hold up to 10 and a half by eight and a half, and it is three quarters of an inch deep. And what a fabulous way to make over those boxes that you receive. Now this is truly a giftable or a saleable or a keepable, whichever one you want it to be. I love how this turned out. I think that the buckles on the front and the handle on the top just really elevate this. I can do a little bit more in terms of blinging this out and I just might and I have an idea of what I want to carry in my briefcase. So be on the lookout for my next tutorial. My next video might not be a tutorial, but be on the lookout for my very next tutorial because we are going to do something awesome with our little briefcase. So y'all, this turned out just as I hoped, and I hope that it has inspired you to take a second look at some of the cardboard boxes that you might receive in the mail. Look at them differently. Look at them as opportunities in your paper crafting. I know that I used a brand new box in this video, but I used that box to show you how you can use boxes just like it to create something like this because we all get boxes that are made exactly like this. So I hope that you have enjoyed this video of my little briefcase. If you have, please hit that like button. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, I'd love to have you join this amazing online crafting family. You guys, as always, please be safe, be kind, be the reason someone smiles today. Happy crafting and we'll chat later. Bye.